Hi people, welcome to the Swanee Herp Lab. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today... <coughs> sorry. What I'm going to be doing today is turning this tank into a tree frog tank. Now, we here at the Swanee Herp Lab have been donated this good-sized tank. I don't really donate it. It was sitting downstairs. No one was using it, and so they said that our lab could have it. And, you know, it's kind of messy right now, it's got a bunch of dirt and rocks, but by the end of this video, it will be a beautiful tank for tree frogs and poison dart frogs. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be showing you what supplies you're going to need for the first main step. Actually first step is cleaning this, which I'll go do in a minute after I show you the supplies. But things you're going to need, these things called hydro balls, they're little clay balls that are good for sort of holding water and keeping things humid. Plantation soil holds in moisture but at the same time it allows plants to grow in it. Normal tank filter like this. Sphagnum moss. Mesh. Alright, so like I said, first step is gonna be cleaning this thing out and y'all don't really wanna see me hosing out a tank so I'll be back in a second. Hello again, guys. Well, I've just spent the last bit of time cleaning out this tank. Uh, in order to clean it out, what I did was first get all those that rock, get all those rocks and that dirt out. Then I rinsed it once, brought it back in here, um, you know, wiped it down completely. Then sprayed it with a very distilled um, water and bleach mixture, just a little bit. You know, sprayed around wiped it down, and then went outside and rinsed out all of that bleach again, brought it up here, and wiped it down. And now we have this nice, clean tank. Our next step is going to involve um, our good friends, the Hydro Balls. The problem with Hydro Balls is as they move around in this little bag, they sort of chip off each other and get really, really dusty. And in order to deal with this, you usually need to wash them off, which isn't really difficult. Well, hello again, guys. I finished putting the hydro balls into the tank. Now, we do need a bit more, and so I ordered some more, and they will be here hopefully in a few days, hopefully by Tuesday, and then I'll finish up with this. But just to show you what's going on, we have taken the mesh uh, and we cut it to fit the bottom of the tank, as you can see, like that. But I will get the next step going once I have all the rest of my supplies. So, thanks for watching. Or, not thanks for watching. I'll be back in a second. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, we don't have all of the hydro balls yet. I was sitting in the lab looking at the tank. And I sort of scrapped some of my old ideas and have gone with some new ones. One is I've removed the mesh. The thing about the mesh is you can use it and it can make things, I guess, kind of easier sometimes, but it's not really necessary. Now, what I've done instead is I've got the filter in here. I've got some rocks. And I've got a lot more rocks soaking right now. Um, I just soaked them in a very distilled bleach um, solution, so that way they don't have any viruses or anything nasty on them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up a waterfall, and I think it's going to be pretty cool. So stay tuned for just a second. Well, guys, I've made some adjustments to the tank, and because of these adjustments, I don't think we'll have to wait for the other ball of hydro ball, or the other bag of hydro balls to get in, so I can use those hydro balls for another tank whenever we get more tanks, and thus we can get more stuff. Anyway, come check out what I've done. For one, I've thrown some rocks in here, just because I can cover them with moss, it'll be pretty cool. Got a good layer of hydro balls going there. But the big thing is this. Um, once it's up and running, this will be a nice little waterfall. You can see we got the filter right up there. 
there we go. A um, little lower part right there where water will accumulate. Well, water will be underneath this entire level of hydro balls, but there it'll kind of poke up and that will act as their, not really a water bowl, but a dish where they can swim. Um, all the holes into the rocks I've plugged up with sphagnum moss so that way they can't get in there and won't get crushed. Actually, I see a little hole there that I need to fix. And the sphagnum will also hold water and it will you know, provide a good habitat for our little animals. So I'm going to just plug up a few holes and then we can start putting in some of that soil. Alright guys, well I think I've done all that I can for right now. I have set up, I've put water into the bottom of the tank as you can see. Right. Alright, let me in. There we go. Um, there's water, the hydro balls are, and then once you get to the dirt, it stops, which is the plan, or which is what I was trying to go for. And that way, you know, water will sort of evaporate out into the plantation soil, keeping it nice and moist. At the same time, it's high enough that the waterfall works. It's working perfectly, I might add. Just look at that. When the new hydro balls get here, I might use some to make that water a bit shallower just because of the frogs that we're getting. They don't really need deep water, but you know, it's looking perfect. So let's fast forward to when I have more supplies. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, it's been a few days. I've done a little bit more to the tank, so let's look at this. I got some moss in the mail, so you can see there's moss. Uh, you already saw the waterfall, which isn't running right now, but moss, um, moss. Added some leaf litter in there, but overall we got a nice looking base tank going. We've got lights that are on a timer, so give it sort of a day and night cycle. What we're going to be doing now is taking this log that I got in the mail, cutting it up, and attaching it to the sides of the tank. So, yeah, let's, let's start on that. Alright guys, the first thing we're going to do for this log is we're going to cut a little section off right here so that we can make something that looks like the base of a tree that's hollow. It goes sort of the back of the cage that provides a nice little hide for the frogs. So. I'm going to get a saw and start going. Well, I have successfully sawed the log and I've placed part of it in the aquarium. As you can see, we've got one right here, which if you look in the front, there's a little hole right there for frogs to go in. And it'll be a nice hide place. They'll have another log over the top when I'm done when I get the next log. Second log is going to be right here, kind of going across, I'll fill it with dirt and moss and put a plant in it. But, yeah. It's going to be pretty chill. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take just some pieces of the log that's left over and attach them to the wall. And, okay. Um, the way that you do that is. First off, some tape, and make sure it's some tape that, I guess, the non-sticky side of it is sort of similar in consistency to athletic tape, something that you know, has a little bit of grip. You need this, a hot glue gun. And what you do is you put a little bit of tape on the glass, and then using the hot glue gun, you attach it, you attach the log to the side, and I will show you now how to do that, I guess. What I've done is taken this tape and just attached it to the wall of the tank. And then, as you can see, it fits perfectly right there. And that will, when I hot glue it on, that'll give the hot glue something to grip to. There's a little side view of the tank. It's going to be pretty cool, but let's start attaching things to the wall. 
All right, guys. Well, I finished attaching this one. As you can see, it's glued and taped on there. A little log like that. Go back out. Put some moss on it. It's hanging down right over the waterfall. And then this one, I filled it with dirt, put some moss, which that moss will start growing hopefully. There we go. Now we've got the first part of the second layer. Other part, there'll be a log kind of going across most of this area over here. And then the final touch will be plants everywhere. Like, yeah, lots and lots and lots of plants. Well guys, we're back. It's been a few days. Nothing really new has happened to the tank. I put another log in there because it came in the mail. There's some moss on a rock now. But what we're doing today is plants. Got quite a few plants here, just picked up from Lowe's. Little tropical plants. And we're gonna go through how to put them in your tank. The I guess the big thing about putting them in your tank is that the soil that they have in their little pots now is usually not suitable for frogs. It usually has some sort of fertilizer, other, I don't know, chemicals that they use to keep plants alive that plants don't really need. But anyway, we gotta get that dirt out and then make sure there's no trace of it left on the plant's roots and then plant them in the cage. So we're gonna get started on that. This is gonna get a little bit dirty. What you're going to want to do is you're going to take the plants out of its little pot, just sort of massage the dirt out. And you want the best for your plants. And just sort of gently rinse the rest of the dirt off the plant. We now have a plant. This plant is going inside of one of these logs, right here. And there we go. There's the first plant in its spot. I'm just gonna fill up the rest of that little log with some dirt, and he should be good. All right, uh, we got the mahogany fern, Pothos drakenia. This is a, another drakenia, Florida beauty. Mm. Aranta, red. We got a good selection here. I'm going to throw them on the tank and I'll show you when we're done. Well guys, it's been a little while, um, over an hour. I am now done putting all the plants into the tank. So let me go ahead and show it to you. This is our pretty much completed tree frog tank. I might get a few more plants and put them in there. Not sure yet, depends on if I can find ones that I want. Yeah, we got plants growing out of logs. Um, more plants growing out of logs. Plants in there, plants are by the waterfall, which the waterfall is currently running. It's not a big waterfall, but something. And those plants will grow, hopefully just sort of take over the cage, provide those frogs with good places to hide. And we should have a good thing going. Next stop, next step is going to be getting frogs. What up guys? It's the second to last part of this video. And what that means is we have frogs. Now we've got a couple different species here. I might order a bit more in the future, but for now we've got um, six, six frogs. Now, for this video, I'm just going to be showing you the frogs, but we're going to be quarantining them for a while. The next part of this video will be me putting them into the tank. So, without further ado, I'm going to show you what kind of frogs we have. So we have here is a <clears throat> variable, um, or not a variable, a uh, dying poison dart frog. Like, not death as in dying, but as like you die clothes or something. Anyway, it's Dendrobates tinctorius, and this particular one is a Patricia morph tinctorius. Actually, I'm just going to have to pick you up and go like this. There you go. 
He's really pretty. I love these frogs. One of my favorite types of poison dart frogs and one of my favorite color morphs of Tintorius. Alright, we're gonna... Oh, sorry, buddy. <clears throat> we have the obvious um, frog for a tropical tree frog enclosure and that is everybody's favorite the red eye tree frog. Now this guy's a bit bigger so he cannot be quarantined in here so we are going to put him or her, I don't know, into this tub right here and you can't see anything can you? Just look at that. Let's um, make it a bit darker. There you go. And now true to his name, this guy has some very, very, very red eyes. Now I've just washed my hands, so I should be good to move him just a little bit into this tank. Oh wow, he is beautiful. What's up? Look at that frog. Oh, that blue and those orange feet. And of course, those red eyes. Kick it out. Next, uh, next, next, next is our blue and black Aratus poison dart frog. There you go. I'm going to be pretty quick with him just because I don't want to stress him out. Blue and black. Aratus, poison dart frog. Usually Aratus are the green and black ones that you see, but this one is blue and black. This is probably my favorite dart frog, my favorite species of dart frog, and one of my favorite tropical frogs. This is a Gulfo de Dulce poison dart frog. These are found only on the Osa Peninsula of Costa Rica. Look at that. Blue legs, bright orange stripe with some... There you go. This is a tiger leg monkey frog. As you can see they're called tiger leg because he has that bright orange and black. Now these guys are pretty chill, they don't move a lot. Um, they change color. Sometimes they're green, sometimes they're purple. So I'll hopefully get to see them purpled up sometime. Anyway, those are the tree frogs. And so now we will skip ahead a week to when I am putting them into the tank. All right, hey guys, um, it's time to move the frogs into the aquarium. So, I'm going to set y'all right there. All right, going on first is the blue and black Aratus. So, okay. I would have loved to have shown y'all him in the tank, but he he got out of there quick. Um, went underneath some stuff. Patricia. Tinctorious. Actually, I don't like it like this. Come on. There he is. Awesome. Alright, um, this whole showing y'all all of them isn't exactly working. Y'all got to see them before. Here's the tank, and they're just going in there and disappearing. So, anyway, thanks for watching the video. You got to see the frogs, you got to see the tank, and I'll update if we get any more frogs. Thanks for watching.